And so, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts this morning be in the right spot to honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. I thought we were singing. <laughs> I said, is it the offering? I will do the offering after the sermon. I'm not just going, yeah, let's do the offering. We're going to, we're going to preach and then we do the offering later. Because uh, money can wait. God cannot wait this morning. Antonio Sanchez uh, was only five years old when he was sent to a Mexican juvenile prison for the mur- murder of his baby brother. From birth, he was tortured by his parents. And the worst thing they did was beating him with chains. So he was, had a pretty tough life. And in prison, his inmates taunted him with the word murderer. And they really went for him. They abused him. They, he, he had a tough, tough, tough life. Most of the times, he had to fight even to get some food. Carolyn Coons, an American professor from Azusa Pacific University, heard about him. And it took her three years to adopt him. And when he was released from prison, he was only 12 years old. But then the real struggle starts because of all the emotional scars. Initially, Antonio was not drawn to his adopted mother. I know a little bit about that. He was more drawn to trouble than anything else. He accused her of not loving him, and he told her frequently, I will not listen to you. It sounds like a typical teenager. But Caroline continued to love her son unconditionally and never ceased to rescue him from trouble. Karen thought that Antonio would never bond with her. And then the big surprise. At his junior graduation, Antonio, in his speech, said the following, I want to thank my mom for adopting me and bringing me to the United States. And then with tears streaming down his face, he yelled, I love you, mom, I love you. The question is what changed Antonio? It was that moment he looked into that woman's eyes, the, the woman who adopted him, and he could see himself as someone of, as someone of worth, someone of beauty, and a love that's unconditionally. And this morning when we think about God, it's the same story because we are God's adopted children. And we, we like Antonia. <laughs> we are troubled children. Would you agree with me? But God never stops loving us. And he's waiting for us until that moment when we look into his eyes and we said, Abba, Father, I love you. I love you. And the moment we look into God's eyes and we see ourselves, someone of worth, someone beautiful, someone loved unconditionally, that's the moment of justifying Christ. It's the moment that we are made right through Jesus Christ. And every day, God offers us to be in a relationship with Him. Hazel Lee said, and I quote, I held the moment in my hand, brilliant as a star, fragile as a flower, a tiny sliver of one hour, I held an opportunity. Now, if you read further in the story, you'll see that she did not accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And I want to ask you, are we going to miss a chance like Hazel Lee? Or are we going to grab that opportunity? Right now, God offers us a relationship of un conditional love. And there are huge debates about, is God's love (coughs) conditional or unconditional? Well, I want to say that God's love is completely unconditional. Last week I spoke about uh, how God created us in His image and, 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 and it was good. And I said, then sin separated us from God. And by sin, it diminishes us as 
human beings. It diminishes us as who we are as people. But God's gift of grace through Jesus' life, uh, through Jesus Christ, that love is far greater than any of our wrongdoings. Because you see, it's that grace that restores our relationship with God. You know, and it always takes me back to the story in Luke about the prodigal son. And I think most of us can identify with that story. The son runs off after he received all the bucks from his mother and uh, dad and uh, his inheritance, and he went and he squanders that. He ends up uh, eating pots with the pigs, and then in deep trouble, he returned to his father. And we all know he was welcomed back with open arms by the father. You know, in many ways, it's a simple story. There's no big deal in it because that is the picture of God. God loves us, and no, no other stuff in this world can take the place of God's love in the relationship. Not money, not power, dare I say, not even family. It's only God's love that can satisfy that need in us. I want to ask the question, does anybody know what the central theme of the Bible is? Ah, you don't know. Let me tell you. It's the love story of God calling people into a relationship. That's the story. If you have any other theological explanation, it's not going to work. It's a love story that God has wrote to his people, calling them into a relationship. You see, unconditional love works like this. God loves us even when we are sinful. But the great thing is, and if you read what's amazing about grace, you'll see that the writer says that, but he refused to leave us that way. And that's God. God will never just leave us sinful. He changes us and he rescues us. But you see, there are no strings attached. Why do I say that? Because it never becomes conditional. Hear me. In our response we choose to love back God does not force you God says here's my love you do with that what you like unconditionally so it's like I give auntie this pen and I say to her there's a pen for you unconditionally I give her the pen it's not mine but unconditionally I give her the pen and what she does with that, it's got nothing to do with me. Unconditionally, I have handed her that pen. And it's the same with God. God has unconditionally given us love. And he said, what do you do with that? There's no conditions to it. You see, because God could have said, oh, you know, you, you better become a better person before, you take, uh, before I give you my grace. You've got to go to church before I give you my grace. God could have put a lot of tags to it, but he didn't. He just said, here is my grace. And you see, God offers this unconditional, self-giving love to us. It's not a system of rules and regulations. We love to make the church a place of rules and regulations. That was never intended to be. 1 John chapter 4, verse 10 says this, listen carefully. This is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Unconditional. And through that unconditional love, we are justified. We can stand just before God and say, Your Son has cleansed me. Here I am. So it becomes then a choice for us to accept this relationship of unconditional love of God. And the moment we say yes to the relationship with God, our acceptance of Jesus uh, changes everything I want to say, shoot. But I want to be more... You see, the moment we accept Jesus, things should start to change in your life. 
You see, because when we accept Jesus, we turn away from sin and we're walking towards that relationship with Jesus. And through that moment, we are justified by Jesus through faith to an eternal relationship with God, the one who knows us and loves us better than we know or love ourselves. And so responding to grace can then be seen as an act of faith. Well, it could only be an act of faith. And like we said, we cannot do anything to merit this relationship with God. It's a gift. It's unconditional. I know we give gifts to our kids and saying, I'll give you a bicycle for Christmas if you good this year. But that's conditional. God says, no, I give you Jesus anyway. Irrespective. Ephesians 2, verse 8 to 9, this morning, read by well, I read that I couldn't find Janet around the corner, but it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it's a gift of God, not the results of works, so that no one may boast. So you cannot boast like Mark. And say, I've been in this church for 50 years. No, Mark, that counts. Zip in God's eyes. It's the gift that you accept. That's what counts. So salvation is then instantaneous and it's continuous. Does it make sense? Maybe if I say it to you this way, it will make more sense. And I quote, I was saved by grace. I am saved by grace. And I will be saved by grace instantaneous continuous and in scripture this this unconditional or the spiritual experience of justifying grace is also known as salvation conversion having one sins forgiven being born again there are many things that we can add to that that makes this experience real for us Justifying grace. I cannot give you a better picture but then to look at a cross of Jesus Christ. That is justifying grace. You know, he gave his life to prove God's love. Jesus didn't say, I'm the year I'm going to die. No, he said, I'm going to prove my father's love and I'm going to die on the cross. He paid for our sins. And so we are justified through Christ. To stand just before the Father. You see, Jesus' sacrifice uh, for us on the cross restores, firstly, our relationship with God. And that, that's the vertical one. And then it restores our relationship with others. And that is the horizontal one. And that's what the Christ is for. So it's from God to us and then from us to others that is what the cross signifies Romans 5 verse 6 says Christ died for us while we were yet sinners thus proving God's unconditional love and acceptance for us so justifying grace then has a double acceptance God said yes at creation for us when, he, when, when we were created and on the cross and the second is, when we choose to say yes, we respond in faith through Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verse 25 gives us a more clear picture. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. God is not a disciplinarian. For us, in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through light. So God is not a disciplinarian. He is a parent because it says we are all children of God. You see, as I said earlier, God does not dictate our response. It's a free choice. An act of my will. And, and, and it took me back to Revelation chapter 3.20 and, and it's a scripture that will always be there for me. It says, listen, I'm standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, 
I will come in to you and eat with you and with me. Isn't it amazing that that scripture say, if you hear my voice and open, who's opening the door? Jesus said, if you hear my voice, I will open the door. Jesus did not say that. He says, if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. And you can only live in that justifying grace through faith when you accept Jesus Christ. And so all you need really to understand this morning from all I said this morning about unconditional love, it is in the giving that makes other people realize. Does it make sense? It's in the giving that makes other people realize. And it's not only God giving Jesus that we realize that we are forgiven, but it's us giving that other people in the world will see what we have. And so justifying grace in the definition of it for me today is through the sacrificial giving of God, because he gave us Jesus, we can stand just before God through grace and faith. And I hope that you will start to see the picture of grace. The grace that has come before we recognize that. Now we recognize that grace through Jesus Christ. Let's see next week where it takes us. Amen. Let us pray. So Lord, we come before your throne of grace. Um, and Lord, there are many requests in our hearts. There is a mad world around us. A world that we not always understand. And Lord, there are so many things we can pray for right now. We think of the devastation of the bushfires and the people's lives who have been changed and moved and transformed by that. We think of the ongoing drought within our own community. Farmers that will struggle to get back uh, to a place where life would be more comfortable than they are right now. We think of, Lord, just so many other things around us, all the things we see on the news. And Lord, currently, the young baby who died 18 months ago, and Lord, the babysitter is now blamed for that. Lord, what devastation to the family, to that young girl. Uh, Lord, and we can just bring these things to you uh, because we do not have the words. But we bring today, in the silence of our hearts, our own struggles to you. And I will give you now the opportunity, just for a moment in silence, to lay before God, because you stand just before him today, because of what Jesus has done for you. So, speak to God today. Go as a child to your parent and tell him, I'm in trouble. And there are others in trouble. Please help. And so, Jesus, with all the things before you now, we ask not that you will pay out the shopping list or supply the shopping list, but, Lord, that you will just hear our prayers because we bring them to you in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen.